Hello and welcome to Adelaide Airport and my journey around Australia checking out unique aircraft continues today on a flight from here in Adelaide to Olympic Dam with Alliance Airlines in the Fokker uh, 50 that you can see behind me. Now it's quite a rare aircraft, in fact that's the reason I've come to Adelaide to check it out. Um, so let's go back in time, I'll show you through check-in and then we'll go on board. As soon as you arrive at the airport, don't head upstairs to departures as Alliance's check-in and bag drop area is actually on the ground level right next to arrivals. Once you've done your business there, it's then up to the main departure area and then you'll go through security. This is my first time at Adelaide Airport and I was really impressed by how modern and spacious it was. And there were plenty of cafes open considering it was 6.15 on a Saturday morning. A real highlight though were the views of the airport apron which was a hive of activity with 737s and A320s heading off to other capital cities. But what's unique to Adelaide are the amount of interesting and reasonably rare aircraft. Here's a Fokker 50 and behind that is a Virgin Fokker 100. And then further away are 737 Classic Freighters and a few BAE 146 Mini Jumbos, although actually they look like Mini C5 Galaxies. Boarding was called and we headed out to see our aircraft, which for me was the first time I had ever seen an F-50 in the metal. As in my recent videos, I'll begin with some history. After World War II, there were literally thousands of DC-3s around, although they were quite an old design, so Fokker wanted in on the action. They developed the F-27 Friendship, which first flew in 1955 and was incredibly successful, also being built under license in the USA by a company called Fairchild. By the 1980s, sales were slowing down so Fokker decided to do a major refresh and make it the F-50. The fuselage and wings remained mostly unchanged, although the main improvements were new Pratt & Whitney Canada PW124 engines, little winglets, and they added an extra forward wheel for extra stability. Inside, the main improvement was a glass cockpit. More of the background story once we're in the air, but let's run through the seats, which are all in a 2-2 layout. Overhead are individual air vents, which is something I really appreciate, and I'm sure most miners would as well if they've just walked out of 45 degree weather at Olympic Dam. It was pretty old school levels of room, which means that there actually is a decent leg room and the usual fold out table, etc. And the view outside of the Pratt & Whitney engines as well as the landing gear. Unfortunately, I was sitting too far back to really see the props, although here's footage of the engine starting up on my return flight from row 4. The seatbelt sign is illuminated. There are four clearly marked emergency exits on this aircraft. In the forward cabin, there is one on the left and one on the right. At the rear of the cabin, there is also one on the left and one on the right. All crew instructions and illuminated information. We took off to the runway, and in the background you'll see a Qantas Dash 8 Q300, which was actually one of the aircraft that killed off the F-50, and another little Fokker that you saw at the start of the video. We were cleared for takeoff, and I must admit there's something very satisfying about watching the landing gear fold up as we head off out over the ocean. I'll skip through some of the takeoff, although I'll include a link to a, the full takeoff footage in a separate video. The views climbing up through the clouds on our way to a cruising altitude of 20,000 feet were pretty impressive and a complimentary water was brought around. Although I must admit I was a little surprised that there were no snacks. I suppose they're used to flying miners out here rather than delicate millennials from Sydney like myself. As we flew just east of Wyala, I'll continue with some more history. 
the former Australian airline ANSAT had an important role here as they were actually one of the launch partners of the F-50, with the other being the German airline DLT Luftverkehrsgesellschaft MBH, which is usually just abbreviated to DLT. And it seems appropriate that an Australian airline, so Alliance Airlines, is one of the last to keep flying them. In fact, Alliance have a large fleet of Fokkers, including the F-70 and 100s, and I've uploaded a vlog on board the F-70 from Port Macquarie to Brisbane, which is on my YouTube channel. There's this cool little analog clock right at the front of the cabin, and in case you were wondering what the toilet inside an F-50 looks like, well, wonder no more. There's this single loo up front, just behind the flight deck. Now unfortunately the views outside were a little drab due to some high altitude cloud, although you could still make out some of the rich bright red soil. In fact, the Australian Outback really does have this unique kind of dystopian look, uh, with incredible harshness and unique different colours. It's like you're flying over a Mad Max film, which I suppose makes sense since it was filmed out here, or maybe the planet Mars. Just south of Woomera, we started our descent down into Olympic Dam, which by the way is essentially an airport built for and by a mining company called BHP. Just before we touch down, you'll get a glimpse of a mine in the distance, and according to their own website, there is a considerable amount of copper, gold, silver, and uranium out there. One of the really beautiful things about the Australian Outback is the rich red colour of the soil, and for my international subscribers in particular, it has that colour because the soil is rich in iron, but that also rusts. So it looks great, but as anyone who had bought a Russian car knows, a pile of rust isn't really good for anything, which is why these lands aren't really good for growing crops. Now back to this particular aircraft, and why it's no longer built. Unfortunately, Fokker designed this at the same time as the F-70 and the F-100 twins, and it seems they're overreached, with both programs being far more expensive than planned. This aircraft was still launched in 1987 and the Dutch government rescued them financially at one stage, but eventually their main source of money from Daimler-Benz pulled their plug as they focused on cars. The other issue was that there was now a lot more competition including from ATR, uh, the Dash 8 and the Saab 340, so sadly in 1997 Fokker went bankrupt and production was ceased. There was actually talk of restarting production with an Indian company called Hindustan showing some interest, but alas that fell through. It was sad to see such a significant aircraft see out its final days in that fashion, but I guess that's business and I do consider myself lucky to have had a chance to fly one of these as they're rapidly all being retired. Now I usually review these flights, although to be honest this was more of a vlog to fly in an interesting aircraft than to actually review it, but look it was perfectly fine. The seat was comfy and the crew were friendly. We left and arrived on time, although I wouldn't have complained if we got a snack or a hot caffeinated beverage since it was an 0640am departure, but anyway, I survived. Here's some impressive camera work, mostly of my jeans, and another view of our aircraft before the view of the terminal at Olympic Dam International Airport. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and there are plenty more aviation videos on my channel, both from around Australia and the world, and more coming, so make sure you subscribe. And also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.